Once upon a time, in a place where horses were considered a mark of prosperity, two brothers lived each in their own homes with their own wealth. Demeter, the rich brother, and Jericho, the poor one. Come on, Jericho. We'll never get there before sundown. The two brothers were riding to a big trade fair that was happening in the city. Just as they were about to leave, Jericho's daughter got there. Please, father, let me come with you. It is a long way, my dear, and you will get tired. I have always wanted to see the city. Please, father. For God's sake, let the child come and let's get on with it. I will be good, Father, I promise. Well, all right. Hop on. They rode all day, and by nightfall, they were quite close to the city. Let's find a place to rest for the night, and in the morning, we shall ride into the city. There seems to be a hut over there. Really? Let's go. This is not a hut, but a stable. A good place to rest for the night. Look, there is plenty of water and food for the horses too. What an exciting place to spend the night. <laughs> All right, now let's have our dinner and go to sleep. So, the three of them made the stable their home for the night. The next morning, they awoke early and got ready to resume their journey. Come on, Nora. We have to leave. What was that? Look! Did our mayor give birth to a foal last night? Had your mayor given birth to it, the foal would have stood next to her. But it has come to my stallion. But, Uncle, how can a stallion give birth? That's true, brother. And it even looks like our mayor. That's right. Give us some food and water, and then hand over my foal to me. But, brother, horses don't come in a hundred colors, Jericho. Maybe this foal was just lost in the forest and has come here to my stallion. Whatever it is, had your mare been its mother, it would have gone straight to her. Since it has come to my stallion, it belongs to me. See, brother? See? So, the two brothers quarreled long as to who should keep the foal. Finally, Nora had an idea. Father, uncle, why don't we go to the city? Doesn't the wise king stay there? Let us go to him and ask him to decide. She is right, brother. Yes, your daughter is smarter than you are. Let's go. They reached the gates of the city. While the brothers were talking to the guards, Nora read a plaque with a picture of a thief put up on a nearby tree. The plaque read, Thief, whoever tells the king about his whereabouts will get a reward of a hundred ducats. The brothers told the king everything. Well, what do you think? This is really difficult, your highness. Had the mare been the mother of the foal, the foal would have drank her milk. But the foal does not really belong to the rich brother either. He is only quarreling for greed. Else he has enough horses of his own, and he can easily let his poor brother have the foal. Well, 
Let us see whether the brothers are rich or poor because of luck or because of their own intelligence or lack of it. What do you intend to do, your highness? When reason fails, wisdom comes to our aid. Let us see which of these brothers is wise. Well, since the fall really belongs to none of you, I will ask you a question. Whoever comes up with an answer that pleases me will have the fall. So, the king asked the brothers a question. What is the fastest thing in the world? What is the softest thing in the world? And what is the most precious thing in the world? Everyone was shocked at the king's strange question. They all eagerly waited for the answers the brothers would give. Demeter thought that if he praised the king in his answer, the king would favor him. So he replied, Well, that is easy, your highness. What can be faster? Then your horse, sire. What can be softer than your bed, my lord? And indeed, what can be more precious than your prince? What is your answer, Jericho? Jericho was a simple, honest man. He did not know how to please people with high and mighty talk, so he didn't know what to say. Your highness, the other brother does not even have an answer. But having no answer is better than having an insincere, dishonest one. Let's wait a minute. Nora was thinking hard. She wanted to give an honest answer, and then suddenly it occurred to her. Excuse me, your highness. Can I reply in place of my father? Sure, why not? I must be honest, sire, that I don't really know the correct answers, but judging by what I have seen in the world, the fastest thing in the world is the wind. It is so fast that it can create a storm and destroy everything in its way. And the softest thing in the world has to be a child's kiss, just as this foal is licking me. And the most precious thing in the world has to be honesty. Else you would not have announced the reward of a hundred ducats for information about a thief. Bravo, bravo, Jericho. Your daughter is indeed wise, honest, and sincere. I am pleased with her reply. I give you not only this foal, but a hundred horses and ten thousand ducats as reward. And as for you, Demeter, you could have been generous, but you chose to be mean. Meanness can only take you that far, but lasting rewards come with sincerity. Let this be a lesson to you. I understand, your highness. Thank you, my lord. You are really kind. And so it is. You can play mean tricks on others, but they don't take us far. People will see through them. But if we really want to lead a happy, fulfilled life, we must be honest, sincere, and wise. <laughs>